Hey, guys, it's been a while. <laughs> um, what was it? Like two two years? Year, Year and, and a half. half. Give us some credit. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yeah, no, so we um, had a podcast. Did we? YouTube says we didn't because they demonetized this channel for us being gone for so long. Uh, I guess we should start by explaining what happened and why we're back. We may have lost an episode of the podcast. Uh, one where we uh, concluded that Erased is a Not Christmas anime. Not a Christmas anime. Is a Christmas Not anime. Not a Christmas anime. It is, it is a Christmas episode. But it's not a Christmas anime. We came to that conclusion at the end. No, I think the whole no, thing. No, I think we we came to that conclusion. No, we did, no I, you're I'm remembering sure. it wrong. No, no. I, you, I'm pretty sure that in this deleted video that nobody can check. You're remembering <laughs> it wrong. You're remembering it wrong. I won the yep, argument. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah, we had like a big whole argument about that on the <laughs> that got deleted. And we got kind of bummed out about that. And then the same week that we uh, lost that... Um, my dad died. So those were about equal tragedies. And that kind of... <laughs> no, I didn't lead with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Equal. Totally totally equal tragedy. So those two they things... They were equally difficult to deal with and process. <laughs> yes. In fact, it's still a bit of a soft spot that we lost that podcast. That was, it was hard to record for a really long time after losing the podcast. Stop. I know, I know. I mean, I don't want to bump people out by focusing on the really, really sad thing that happened. That's true. Um, I also, so we could focus on an even sadder thing that happened. Um, but when we started to get back on our feet, Koro said, peace out, motherfuckers. Yep. Koro was like, this would be a really funny time. A lot of, like a lot of our time over the last year also went towards the process of buying a house oh yeah we moved to another <laughs> province yeehaw. yeehaw yeehaw we're in good old-fashioned alberta now <laughs> so we're in alberta now but that means we finally have more time to yeah yeah no you know, we're, we're to you know to have exist fun to have fun please <laughs> hello that was probably a really awkward cut um guess we should explain what's going on. Maybe. So uh, the intro to the podcast that we initially recorded was really good. And the sponsor spot was uh, very fun. And we got a lot of genuine reactions. By yeah, the way, it... this, this podcast is sponsored by Boxu. Um, Boxu. Uh, Boxu. <laughs> Boxu. 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 You'll find out more later. But yeah, so we kind of didn't have a plan going into the last one. We just wanted to film to to like get the get moving on the podcast because we hadn't moved in way too long, um, and we want to keep those parts that we had before. But we'd like to talk about something with a little bit more direction, a little than... more, a little more pizzazz, a little more bite than what have we been watching? Because it's you know what have we been watching was a good warm up, but. It was just kind of, yeah, we just ended up rambling about... Nothingness, really. Yeah. yeah. But today, um, today, we have something a little better than randomness. It's uh, times that I was wrong. <laughs> uh, could have been times that we were wrong, but I'm, no, the hot, I'm the hot take machine in this household. Not, it's, it's not quite that you're... I mean, you are the hot take machine in this household, yes. But also, it, it, like, it's not that I've never said anything wrong. Right, it's not that I've never had like a hot take that was, mm, but like com compared to you, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody remembers what I say compared to you. It doesn't hold as much like you know. So there's just less for me to talk about because nobody remembers, including myself. <laughs> so anyway, I, I mean, Jeff you probably remember the least of anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think we will start off with a absolute bangity bang. And talk about the Jeff-sized elephant in the room. Oh boy, piracy! We're talking. I had I had opinions on piracy once. And How long ago was that? I we haven't checked, but I can you guess guesstimate guesstimate off the top of my up. head? I think it was about four years, maybe five. No, not uh, yeah, no, it would have been five. Anyway, Pan pandemic throw throws everything. We're off still in twenty twenty. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you you, you put out. We're in first, 2020 part three. First, it started with your video on Kiss Anime, right? That and, one and how first, much they make. And how much they make. And you still 100% stand by fuck Kiss Anime. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. So all of those. So, so to be clear, to be clear. Before we get into the meat of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to be clear, uh, there are, I have, I guess, two separate uh, piracy takes. Uh, and one of those is fuck Kiss Anime and every website like it, which I still stand by um, because, uh, I mean, they make a shit ton of money off of other people's work without paying anybody a cent. They often exploit volunteer labor from their communities under the guise of, uh, you know, oh, you're just helping out. We're all, we're all just, you know, dudes who like anime making cool anime stuff for our cool fan run anime website. As and they then, pocket a million dollars. <laughs> As, and, <laughs> on the, on the, on the low end sometimes, yeah. but yeah. um, yeah. So, so like, Often, I mean, you know, side note to that, they're often tied to like bigger criminal enterprises. Um, That's a whole other rabbit hole. But yeah. But like the, I mean, the main thing is the people who run them are scumbags. And in order to make as much money as possible, they also, they even try to like uh, exploit the people who use the websites with like real scammy spam ads and, you know, potential viruses embedded in the page and a bunch of other stuff. They ju they're just, it's not good to stream pirated stuff. Torrent it. Torrent it. Let's yeah. See. That that is the ultimate take that I'm arriving at. Um I wanted to build up to that more. But, Spoiler. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, uh peer to peer file sharing um is good and cool and uh I mean like beyond just being, you know, like an acceptable way to, to access media um, is genuinely good for like media preservation too, right? Because, um, you know, streaming sites shut down when they run out of money. Um, physical media, it's more reliable, but it, it still goes away after a time. And like stuff that's stored on a peer-to-peer -peer network is is one of the the safest and and like most reliable places to keep something so like in terms of media preservation um i've i've like come around to the opinion that like torrents are at, there there's actually like some very strong cases to make that seeding torrents isn't just like morally neutral but actually kind of a good thing to do yeah i don't know when i made that original video like I, I, I let, like, a lot of different feelings get mixed up there. Because, like, on the one hand, I do think that, you know, pirate streaming websites are scummy. Um, I, like, you know, I wanted to get that out there. Uh, but then I got that mixed up with being kind of mad at people who are like pirate anime it's a, it's a good way you know you should pirate anime to to protest stuff you don't like about the anime business and like i was frustrated with that because there was like a lot of misinformation in that movement and stuff like that but that didn't really have anything to do with you know piracy itself it was just more the people advocating for it and like yeah, no, so I, I, I let being angry at a certain type of anime fan and being angry at a certain illegal business model cloud my judgment about, like, a whole topic. Um, but also your, your judgment on it was kind of not, like, sheltered, but it was only your experience you were kind of looking at. Right? That's, that's, is, yeah. Is that's you were kind of looking too. at a... a you know, and you have since learned to look at things from multi-perspectives like that, you know, like... Yeah, no, I think the thing I regret most about that video was just, like, completely disregarding people who can't afford to watch anime or people who, like, maybe can afford $5 a month for Crunchyroll, but, like, it is legitimately a decision between that and, and one else. extra cup of coffee to get them through the, through the month because the mar margin's that tight. And there's just, you know, the, like... Yeah, I, I don't know. I came at the whole thing from, like, a perspective of, like, very sheltered, very privileged experience watching anime. Um, where, like, you know, my, my biggest inconvenience with anime was just trying to find 
the, uh, the final $60 DVD to complete a set of a show that I was trying to watch, right? Because I, because like, try to get the 30th volume of Dragon Ball Z that costs $60. But I had the money to do that, you know, like I had yeah. my parents supporting me and that like immediately put me in like, and also you live in a country where you can go to the store and get it. it it's yeah. licensed in your country, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of countries that just don't have proper access to anime and stuff. So yeah, I, I don't know. I've, I've come around to like a much more open-minded perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I not, not even open-minded. I've, I've like, I think a lot of what I said in that video was wrong, you know, just straight up wrong. Um, so you would not, yeah, I guess the question is, would you do the video again a different way with a different message in it or just not do it again? I, think I mean, I, I think that's the question we should ask about all of these or whatever. I definitely it? wouldn't do a video titled, there's no, no, no good no, reason yeah, to pirate I mean, yeah, again. But um, not, not quite the, yeah, obviously the way you presented it, but I mean the topic, right? Yeah. W would you, if you could do it again, if you could, could like replace that video, would you rather just have it stay gone because it got copyrighted down which is kind of ironic um but would you rather it stay gone or would you would you rather like put a video out there with a different message or would you rather just shut the fuck up about it um <laughs> yeah i mean like i think there's i probably like i probably wouldn't put a video out on the topic at all no. to be honest yeah. but i mean that jeff would not current current jeff would not do that um but I mean, maybe that's, you know, maybe I'm thinking of that because I've tried to write that video a couple times yeah. um, and it's, you know, just been stressful. difficult and stressful and, and I've decided to bounce on to other things. But like, I don't know, like I would like, I think there's value in a more nuanced exploration of like the ethics of piracy. Like, you know, there, there's a really interesting conversation there. Um, you know, like I was, I was another big thing I regret about that video was just like being super dismissive and uh, disrespectful toward Unique Name Asaurus for his video. But like, mm -hmm. you know, the, he brought up like some really interesting. I'm just checking how long ago that was. Sorry. <laughs> it was a long time ago. But um, yeah, he brought up some really interesting stuff in his video and his follow up video. Um, and, you know, like I think there's. A good discussion to be had about like the right and wrong way to pirate I, I guess would be the way to put it like again I think do not use a website like kiss anime torrent just uh, by torrenting you're also like contributing to the community in a way by seeding there's just a lot of good stuff in peer-to-peer -peer file sharing in general uh and and like you know I could talk about that and the you know the, the way that Nintendo is is erasing ROMs from the internet, uh, <laughs> which is is one of the things, one of the other things that kind of like pushed my kinda woke perspective the other way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was just like ha hashtag woke about it. Yeah, I mean, I was just like, I mean, with Nintendo, it's extra frustrating because like they put out maybe five percent of their library ever, and then you know take down everything else but that's yeah like the media preservation aspect of the conversation is something that deserves its whole own other topic because mm -hmm. like there's a lot of anime that people wouldn't be able to watch today if not for people recording them on vhs and uh fan subbing them and and yeah. you, like like not fan subs in the way that you're thinking of now but like literally they would take a machine <laughs> that yeah they they had like these machines that would like apply hard subs to a VHS and then they like back in the eighties and they would, you know, trade those around at early conventions and stuff like that. Like there's a lot of history to go into there and, and, you know, stuff that deserves more respect. Um, yeah. But like, I don't, the reason I don't think that I would end up making that video is just because I tend to focus on like analyzing media over you know th that's what i want to do when i'm not like making a video like that one which was to be honest designed to start an argument in order to get engagement and you know yeah. 
I was I was I was trying way too hard to play the game back then and and yeah I I don't think I'd try to create something argumentative like that so I don't know if I would end up on the topic of piracy by myself yeah maybe if someone brought it up or yeah yeah, yeah. um all right I guess we pre we, we pre made a little list. We yeah, pre made a little. It was just, it's just about. easier because unlike our last one, we just stared off into the abyss. And, when we didn't and we're have like, ah, uh, we watched Spy Family. Yep. Recently. Anyway, so the next thing that you kind of came up with, or that we came up with, is things you would reapproach was kakegurui and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean that kind of ties into what I was saying about how like. Like, rage baiting was, to an extent, part of my content strategy back then. And, like, you know, even then I was trying to balance, like, being positive about stuff I liked with, with, um, you know, with, with the negativity. But, like, you know, I don't know. Like, like I, I... See, for what it's worth, yeah, I have never watched... Um... Nose man. Gam Kaiji. Thank you. Gambling nose man. <laughs> gambling nose man. I've never watched Kaiji. Gambling nose man, and I've never watched Kakegurui, and your video didn't put me off of Kakegurui, for what it's worth. For what okay. it's worth. But then again, I'm also a little biased in which I don't look at your stuff, at least back then, you know, as well as some people did. I don't look at it as like inherently negative off the bat, whereas some people might have had a knee-jerk reaction to it. So maybe I don't count. But personally, as someone who has never watched Nose Gambling or Horny Gambling, I, it didn't put me off of Horny Gambling. Yeah, I mean, the follow-up video, like where I doubled down on hating on Kakegurui, that's the part, I mean, that was like nakedly like, this video has a lot of engagement. Let's try to keep that going. Um, but yeah, no, like like with the original video, my intent was to just use hating on popular thing, which is generally a pretty successful content model um, in order to uh, sort of piggyback much less popular thing into the public eye, right? So my goal there was more to like, give ups to, to Kaiji than to bring down Kakegurui. But like, I still ended up being really unfair to the series, I think. Like, I was just like, I was, I basically spent the whole time hating on Kakegurui for being something that it's not. And then in my follow-up video, I was just like, oh, well, here's why it's not a good character study, which like, like, you know, like, like I, I stand by this, the semantics of that argument, if that makes sense. Like, I wouldn't say that Kakegurui is a good character study, but I also, like, I regret giving off the impression that, like, I, I hate the show because um, some people definitely have the, the impression that I hate it. And I, you know, some, I... Some people have some impressions about things you hate that you've never said anything negative about. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's a different conversation, that's too. That's a very different conversation. Um, but yeah, no, like, I regret hating on it because, like, I actually really like Kakegurui a lot. Like, I, I, I had a lot of fun reading it for that. Um, I had a lot of fun watching it you know like I, I watched it and then I read the I binge read the entire manga right and I did that like you know the 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 reason I told myself I did that at the time was you know just to shit on it from a more fair perspective um which is also the excuse that I told myself with the next thing that we talked about um but like I I actually had a lot of fun reading it and I was just like, at the time, my like mentality was like, oh, well, you know, this isn't like Kaiji, which is my favorite thing about gambling that really like has that tension and has that like sense of danger and, and genuine stakes. Uh, and it, it's not like that. It's more like Yu-Gi-Oh, which at the time my mentality was like, oh, Yu-Gi-Oh is this dumb kids thing where, you know, the, the main character always wins no matter what by pulling something out of his ass. Um, pulling something out of his hair. Yeah, yeah, he's pulling something out of his hair. <laughs> and there's no, you know, there's no, like, real stakes because you always know how every gamble's going to win. And Kakegurui is pretty much the same way where there's, like, the one thing that 
Yumeko loses early on, uh, mo partly due to somebody cheating, not because she did bad gambling. Um, and, you know, I like in my mind, I was paralleling that to Kaiba cheating at Yu-Gi-Oh! And that's the one time Yu-Gi loses in the whole Duelist Kingdom arc. But, um, and I was like, oh, that's a really cheap uh, storytelling device. And I don't like that. But, like, a couple years later, having, you know, gone back to Yu-Gi-Oh! as an adult and been like, oh, man, I actually fucking love this. Especially the early stuff. Like, especially the early manga. Um... And then just looking around for stuff like it and realizing there's basically nothing like early Yu-Gi-Oh, including modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, the fact that Kake Garui is so close to that is actually great, right? The fact that it like has that energy of, you know, just just uh, in in borderline insane gambling addicts, um, just doing whatever fucked up thing they think they can gamble on this week, be it like, uh, you know, a game of cards where you have to rip your fingernails out or like stabbing a stack of money and you get to keep every uh, dollar bill that the knife pierces, but if you pierce your hand, you lose it. Like, like that's a Yu-Gi-Oh gamble, but it could be a, a Kakegurui gamble. And I, I don't know, like I... So, so... Yeah, with the I, same question about about Kake, about it as the, the the piracy thing, would you, if you were to do it again, would you rather do a comparison of the two of them of Kake Gurui and Kaiji and frame it differently? Would you rather do a focused video on just Kaiji? Like I know you've done other videos about Kaiji, but um, like would you rather have done you know go back in time and have released a dedicated video on Kaiji instead, a different type of comparison? I think I think what I do now would be like a broader video on like gambling in anime or talking that. about like that's why you're the video man and not me because i didn't <laughs> or that <laughs> yeah no, that, but that's how i think i'd do it is i'd just like talk about both of them in the context of also stuff like i mean init does initial d count as gambling no, in anime no i mean they make bets sometimes but like you know, it would mainly for be stickers, those and you know, and... it, it's bets for stickers. <laughs> it's bets for I'm going to rip the sticker off your car, you weenie. Uh, I mean, or I'm going to kidnap the... your girlfriend, either one. <laughs> <laughs> that's the same kind of gambling they got in Metabots, though. And I would, you know, that's kind but that's more of a no, game of don't, skill. Don't, don't Metabots, don't they fight for their pieces? Yeah, yeah they fight you know, for like, pieces. It's just, yeah, but they're not fighting for their cars. They're fighting. Maybe there is. I'm trying to remember if there is any races where they put their cars on the line. I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> can't remember a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> and and so Bo Bo a, a wild Bobby appeared. Hold on. Be beautiful boy. Beautiful, 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 beautiful baby. <laughs> there you go. He has his dick and balls on him face. He does have a dick and balls right on his face. See? And the Hitler mustache. It's really unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so so anyway so anyway on on the same kind of um on the same kind of vein as uh um Kake Guru Lee, you you had another one that you brought up that I didn't even consider as like one you would want to Yeah um so I like around the same time that I shat on Kake Guru Lee, uh I also like a couple months later, I made like a video dunking on Black Clover because everybody was hating on Black Clover at the time. And... It was pretty painful. That, that's I, why, like, I, the... I didn't consider it like something you would ever want to hashtag apologize for. Um, but then again, I didn't watch past what we watched together. And my only memory and thought about Black Clover is Naruto screaming. So, uh, yeah, yeah. No, the, the, I mean, Asta's voice actor, especially early on, was really bad. Like, like I, I stand by that. Uh, I stand by the first few episodes have, like, big pacing issues. Um, Thank you for the butt in the face. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Uh, uh, thank you for the butt in the face. <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, um, yeah, no, so so Black, Clo Black Clover. What was I talking about? <laughs> Just got a face full uh, of cat yeah. ass. <laughs> face full of cat ass. Okay, let's put him on the floor. Yeah. Okay. Everyone was hating on it. Everyone was hating on it. And, like, to be fair, the first couple episodes are pretty bad. Um, and, like, 
the padding that they added did make them worse. Like, I think a lot of the criti like I I don't think I made bad criticism in that video necessarily. Um, and like, I even read ahead in the manga, but I was trying to find stuff to hate on like the whole time. And like, I, you know, at the time I, I didn't really appreciate just like how utterly gorgeous the art in the manga is. Like, that's a point that I'd really Did bring up. Did you read some of the manga? Theater. I forget. Yeah. Um, I, so I read, uh, I, I don't remember. God, I, I read like 15 chapters. Right. And I was like, I don't like this. And you know, the whole time I was trying to find reasons not to like it. And that that's what I regret is because I, I came at it from a perspective of, you know, I, I didn't like the first episode and I was like, oh, great. This is going to be like, it, it's a big Shonen Jump series. It's It's got like a fan base. <laughs> Long live the king. <laughs> I don't think it's on the no, camera. No, it's not. Oh. But Bobby just uh, got... Uh, uh, he just Mufasa. got, he just he got, got Mufasa off of long the cat live tree. The king. It's not her fault. <laughs> She's so scared now. He jumped up. He tried to jump up onto the platform. Um, it's like a multi-platform cat tree, and he tried to jump up onto the platform that Junkrat was on. And he's terrified of her because she's a bitch. So um, he was so just he was hanging like, off like this. <laughs> and then he fell off. Anyway, yeah. um, um, he just does not want you to talk about Black Clover. He Bobby's does not. like, shut the fuck he's up like... about Naruto. I hate him. <laughs> uh, what if I call him Screamy Naruto or Loud Naruto? Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I. So, like, I read 15 chapters of it and I was looking for reasons to hate on it at the time and, like, I said head ass stuff in the video that I do regret. Like specifically, I like I remember there's a bit where I was like shitting on some of the animation for like using scribbles for smear smear frames and like it was good animation, you know. I was just like I was I was looking for nits to pick, right? And if you go into something with that attitude, of course you're not gonna enjoy it. Yeah. Right? And like when I look at Black Clover now, I've read, oh, fuck, I forget how many chapters, like it's 80 chapters or something like that. Um, you originally went back to give it like another shot kind of because of Garnt's praise of it, right? You, there was, you had a big video on it kind of that made you reconsider. Yeah, that was, a, that was definitely a big motivating factor for me. Um, and then like, I, you know, I looked back more into the creator of it too and how they were inspired by Berserk and... Um, the other thing that sort of pushed me to, to do it was I ran out of One Piece chapters and I was like, I want some good fantasy, right? Like I want a good immersive fantasy setting. And it didn't really do that for me. Like I, the artwork is gorgeous. The, like the, the aesthetic of the world is really nice. Um, I do still feel like the world building's kind of hollow though. Like I, I feel like the magic systems you know, just kind of. I, I would there. say now you don't think that it's terrible. You just think that it's not for you. Yeah, no, I, I that that's a good way to put it. And I like. I mean, there are some things that I think are are pretty incredible about it. Like the fight panels are amazing, and a, a lot of like the visual effects for the magic are really cool. I just when I look at how the world's government's set up and how the you know the the magic system works the lore of the demons and all of that i just not your thing doesn't, it doesn't do it for me it doesn't do it for me and like it's not like it's a genre that is hurting for content so yeah you know and, and at the end of the day if i'm if i want to read a shonen i'm gonna i'm already keeping up with jujutsu kaisen um one punch man uh yep. <laughs> chainsaw man's coming back soon God, there's so much there's so much yeah. yeah. Um, so, so as but, far as but oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, but, but but I just want to put out there that like I do, I, yeah, I, I do still feel like I jumped the gun on it and didn't give it a fair shot. So, so if you were to go back, would you have done that video differently or just not? I think I'd still have done the video because it got hell of views. <laughs> <laughs> but, <That's fair. laughs> like, um, and honestly. I'm just really proud of that thumbnail. The thumbnail that I did for it is like... Speaking of proud thumbnails, um, do you want to give a shout out to your favorite thumbnail of all time? Communism Naruto? Communism Naruto, <laughs> right? Yeah. 
<laughs> you still don't shut up about that one. I I don't blame you. It's a fucking great thumbnail. Just please don't ever do that again. <laughs> That was, that's the most clickbaity thing. Not a mistake. That's not no, something yeah. I regret no, doing No, no, no. You're just, just on the topic of thumbnails. You made me think of good thumbnails. You, that is one you're proud of, and rightfully so, on the topic yeah, of clickbait. I, I mean, that was like... Just never do it again, please, God. You, you, you got away with it once. Don't do it again. I'm I'm proud of that one because it's like an optimal shit posty yeah, thumbnail. Yeah. You know, Kakegurui, like d doing Kakegurui in Black Clover to an extent... Um, the experience of that and like reading the comments on that and like seeing how those affected those videos affected those fandoms and uh, people who like those shows made me like really reevaluate how I was doing um, thing bad style criticism. Um, Cause I mean, you know, I grew up on angry video game nerd, nostalgia critic, stuff like that. So I, I found that stuff to be really funny and, and those experiences helped me see that maybe I should have like a more positive spin, which led me to the roast format now where I like try to, to extol the virtues of something while also like mer mercilessly making fun of the stuff that it does, that it deserves to be made fun of in it. Um, and like, I, I like that better. And I think that that more positive, openly comedic, wine as opposed to being like you know or not openly comedic but like excessively funny and not just funny to somebody who already hates the thing that i'm making fun of mm -hmm. or is looking to just see something get dunked on um i think that approaching my content that way is a big part of like what has given me the ability to to make jokes and have them interpreted as jokes without people being like, is he being serious? Um, like, I think the last time that I said something that got taken way too seriously was when I said that rabbits are minions for people with culture. That's <laughs> that that's the last time. Way too serious. That was a while ago, thankfully. But, but like, that, some people got so mad about that. Oh like, yeah, yeah. I, and we, I don't want to go into, I don't want to make this times people have been mad at me because yeah, that's yeah. not, you know, um, I don't want to like, like to, to touch on something that you mentioned in there, you mentioned kind of, uh, uh, effects on communities. Is yes. there a certain community you'd like to speak about tonight, Jeffrey? Uh, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's, uh, no, <laughs> I don't know what you're SAOing saying. Okay. Yeah. So SAO. Um, to be clear, I don't think I'd take back any of my SAO videos per se, but there's stuff that I said in the earliest ones, especially that just, I think had like a really bad impact on the fandom and also just how people who like SAO are treated in the anime community. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm not the only one who shit on it, right? Yeah. You know, like, like, yeah that was an attitude that I was playing to, but I definitely amplified it and kept it going. Um, and like, I, I think the videos that I made on the topic are funny, but the thing that I regret is just being so like, one, aggressive with the fandom. Like I, you know, I got, I, I got, I predicted when I made the video that I would get comments telling me to die and uh, make myself die and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I anticipated that because I'd seen other SAO <laughs> discussions online. Um, and then like I acted like the people who were saying that represented the entire fandom and everybody who likes SAOs like a child. And I, you know, like, there was just a lot of unnecessary hostility toward the fan base and toward Reki Kawahara in those videos. And I've already apologized to Reki um, in the, uh, I think it, it was in the, the Dumpster Fire Simulator 2019 video, the, the one on Alicization part one. Yep, um, I think so. 
but yeah, no, I because I, I I was just like aggressively shitting on him and painting him as like the worst writer ever and like trying to make him my nemesis because I thought that that would be like a funny narrative to run in videos and just I feel bad about all of that, right? Like I don't like I don't like coming down on people who don't deserve it, which is part of why I did the cult videos. Um, you know, you mentioned to me a while ago about yeah. an experience with. Yeah, that was, so there was like a moment that sort of made me see that the SAO videos were having like a negative impact. Um, and I I wish I could say that I immediately changed the way I was making them, but I, you know, I, I, I got less aggressive on the fan fan base from there, yeah, but, but I, I was still like, you know, dunking on. Um, but I was staying at a friend's place uh, for an event um, and, uh, another friend, uh, was hanging out with us at the time. Um, and the friend who I was staying with, uh, his brother mentioned that he liked his, his younger brother, his younger brother, who was still in, in high school was like, oh yeah, I like SAO. Um, and then this other friend of mine, uh, was just like, oh, that's so stupid, right? Jeff is, is terrible. And just like like only idiots like SAO and, and just like really ragging on the kid and like but it was kind of like a, a moment of like oh man nobody should feel like that about a show they like right yeah, like nobody yeah, should no, be specifically I, I, pointed at and been like haha because yeah, yeah I mean I think every weeb has had an experience at some point where someone's made fun of them for their favorite show and that sucks yeah. and I don't like contributing to that right like i don't know I, I saw my videos having like more of a negative impact on people than i really wanted them to um and after that i tried to keep the focus on the content although i was still being a dick to reki kawahara um that character arc came a little later <laughs> yeah yeah no i i in baby steps but that's okay yeah you got to the destination eventually yeah like i remember specifically i was like at the time, I was like a fan of uh, Stephanie Sterling stuff, and I was like, Reki Kawahara is going to be my David Cage. And you know what? I've come to realize that one, Reki doesn't deserve that. He's a good de dude. And two, David Cage deserves hate from multiple people. That is, it's perfectly okay for more than one person to make their entire personality about hating David Cage. And this is Jeff's announcement <laughs> that his channel will be changing gears. <laughs> to to just the the message of my ch channel is changing from anime is good and people should watch it to David Cage should not be allowed to make anything ever. anymore ever. But yeah, that that is your your complex feelings on on SAO is Yeah, I just yeah, I, I like I regret I regret being mean to people yeah, about it. Yeah. Pretty much all the criticisms in my old videos are valid and I stand by them. You know, I haven't watched them. In I years. haven't gone back and watched those videos yet. It's been yeah. quite a while, but so you can't like 100% definitively say that. Please don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't there might be something. Where... Put that into stone where you said that. But as far as you remember, you yeah. stand by all of the content related. Yeah, no. I, I And like... I, like, I think some of those are still some of my best videos. Like, the SAO is a bad game, too. Like, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with that one. But, like, yeah, I mean, my only real regret, and it's not really a regret because I had to do that style of content to develop my own style. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Of, of roast. But, yeah, the only thing that, like... You can apply like a blanket um, regret to anything that I did a this is the worst anime ever or just shit on it just to shit on it type video that I didn't give it a fairer shake. But I will say um, one video that is constantly being re-recommended re to me that, that does not fall under that and absolutely deserves everything you gave it, Ragnarok. Oh, yeah, yeah. Master, Master of Ragnarok and Blesser of Einher. That one, if you like it, you should feel bad. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Definitely feel bad. Not not if you like the light novel. That's I've heard the light novel's better. No, but if you like the specific anime like, that you, we suffered you, through. If you like that anime, 
Um, that that is one you stand conception. by. Conception. <laughs> yeah. No. Like the stuff that I do in my worst of the year yeah, lists. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm goofing. I'm goofing because that one's always in my recommended feed, and everybody seems to wild, widely agree that that was shit. Any, anyway, um, so this is the subsec, subsec, subs, subsection titled Times Jeff Wasn't Wrong, but Rather Misrepresented. Mm-hmm. So, um, what to say on, on the whole JoJo uh, skip parts situation? For starters, the part you still stand by. Uh, which is that it's completely okay to just read the parts of JoJo that you're interested in and then fill in the other parts later or not if you don't want to. But you do have other feelings about the way that shook out, right? Yeah. So or like the way it was presented, rather. Yeah, so I, I, I think too much of that video ended up being dedicated. For what it's worth, I agree, by the way. I agree. To the, the skipping yeah, parts. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I should clarify this now. I started with part three. I, th- I mean, I think we're naturally inclined to 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 be more open to that just because we, gr- that's how we grew up experiencing that too. Everything. Actually, I never considered that. I never. Considered I never that considered way. that. I never considered that. That like, as a Canadian consuming anime and not and, many and TV shows, but anime, not quite as many TV shows, but anime, we never yeah, got to watch. It was, anything it was in always order. like you. Yeah, like yeah. Dragon Ball Z would would jump from the Saiyan arc straight to Cell, and then when they ran out of Cell episodes, they'd randomly show um, uh, Namek, but then they'd jump around because there was new episodes out again and stuff, and, like, I still... Yeah, they, they'd... <laughs> you know, like, they would they would go back... They'd run out of episodes, start playing from the start of the Frieza saga, then more episodes would drop, and suddenly... And they'd jump the, back yeah, to where yeah, they yeah. were and stuff, and, like, I guess that, yeah, you're right, that I never considered that, that we kind of are more okay with it, maybe, because that's how we had to. Yeah, just just broadcast like like yeah if, if you didn't pick an anime up on dvd in uh, canada at least yeah and until such a time as we discovered the internet um there was no way to like on demand watch an anime from the start you just watched what was on and like i we both got into a ton of stuff by like jumping into like a random middle episode of Actually, I think I watched Inuyasha from the beginning, but but like, I I did not. I don't yeah. remember where I started in Inuyasha, but I did not watch it from the beginning. I remember that. Yeah, I, yeah. I know that for sure. Is that I I like it was early on, but it was random. And like Dragon Ball Z was another always random one. Escaflone, it was always random. Like the episodes of Escaflone, they there they would just mm-hmm. randomly fill in a ran- of an episode of Escaflone when they needed to. Yeah, I mean. We both got into Pokemon probably like 20, 30 episodes in. Whatever, though. Um, actually, no. You watched no, that one I from watched the, the start? premiere, yeah. I, I remember the commercials. My mom, I made my mom be like, oh, I'm the TV is mine at this time. I, I specifically remember the commercials because they used the, the clip of Pikachu. Um, I got to stop turning away from the microphone. They used the clip of P- the, all of the Pikachus making electricity, and I was blown away. I was like, all of those Pikachus? There's only one Pikachu, right? Because we only had the games. The games were already out for us um, before the anime started. I thought they dropped the... Oh, yeah. No, in Canada, we had like a delayed release for the show. So I remember yeah. seeing the commercials of that. So yeah, no, I, I was there for the beginning of Pokemon. So that one is not... Okay, good. okay, but okay. Anyway, we should... But yeah, no, I, I that <laughs> that experience, I think, has like given us a different perspective on how important it is to start something from the beginning. And like, to me... There's definitely things that I think you should watch in the right order. Like if it's a mystery, especially like a mystery where what you know and what you don't know at any given moment is is like really integral to the viewing experience. But like, you know, like like when I look at JoJo, you know, people were like people came up with like a bunch of different um criticisms of my of the watch order and like my regret to be clear my regret right. from that video was spending so much time on my alternate watch order and publishing it as a separate marketing thing for the video as a whole cuz like in my mind i was like okay this will make people curious to watch the video and it actually just made people furious in part because certain people misrepresented it yeah i also regret how i titled it like looking back it was a very antagonistic because i was like you should skip jojo parts and the the actual message of the video is if you don't want to watch the first part of jojo it or is whatever 
you know, you could you can jump right to part four and and that's what makes you happy, or, or part three, and 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 probably have a good time. Um, but the actual like chart. Yeah, no, like I I wish I hadn't put the chart out, but at the same time, like a lot of the criticisms of that chart just ended up, you know. Ma- it was, it was a circle jerk of, of yeah it was just a circle jerk of like oh what you know why can't you just count from one to seven that's how you and it's like okay yeah, yeah great um that's that's i i there's a whole 30 minute video explaining all of that but you're never but gonna the watch chart it was or taken, even the yeah. part where i said that this video this chart isn't the but yeah so your chart was just a like hey after you talked about all of this stuff being like uh, it's okay you were just kind of like and here's a suggestion of like, yeah. Here's a yeah. It was like here's an alternate way to watch it. Less as a less as a. I mean, you know, I, I think I think that that order is a fun way to watch it. Yeah. And I, I've gotten comments from people who say that they enjoyed it that way. Yeah. But like, it, it was it was a it was an example to show that watching it out of order doesn't necessarily completely ruin the viewing experience. And instead, it got shared and represented as Jeff is saying this is how to watch Jojo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that became like a whole ordeal of uh, and now I think there's like truly people who think that you think that that's the correct way to watch Jojo and that was fucking annoying but like that, and that it is really fucking annoying. It really really like went places too which was really like you know and it's it's oh god yeah, that was a whole thing of like it got picked up by people who specifically just want to misrepresent things, mm-hmm. you know, and it got who just want to like create outrage. Yeah, the, by the actual to... outrage people who like don't care about what they're outraging about, they just yeah. you know, and it got and, and it also got picked up by like people who want to claim JoJo as theirs and only theirs and don't want anybody who doesn't think like them to, yeah. to enjoy the series. And it kind of um, snowballed in a way that, like, after half of a day of it, like, after, you know, you post the video in the morning, and by dinner time, it was no longer people having problems with your JoJo watch order. It was just people being like, anyway, I fucking hate Jeff, right? Yeah. And, like, you know, six hours after your video went up, it was no longer, or that, that chart started going around. It was no longer like I have a problem with Jeff's definitive watch order, and it was just like anyway, I'm gonna tweet art of you being beheaded at you because JoJo, and I'm gonna gonna you know, yeah. and it like really, really snowballed out of proportion. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, there had been a few things that year that snowballed like that the same way, but like nothing, nothing like JoJo, and I don't think anything has snowballed since, since then like that either. Like it was so yeah snowballed it was just in you know six hours after that it was people doing stuff like that with the art yeah. and then you know five hours after that six hours it turned into people just quote tweeting or whatever uh that chart and just being like anyway jeff's girlfriend's fat and ugly like and it was no longer even about your chart but it was used as like a, a i have noticed that when people don't like actually have like a significant argument about what i'm saying that they go after you and and that gets to a point where you can't like not that you can't defend yourself but it ends up getting to a point where you you can't give that attention you know and because of that people start to have the wrong idea about what you said because it's either give these people attention who are who are being like and and fight a losing battle yeah Um, and and it sucks because that was not on the youtube end of it it was not a terribly received video it's never had more dislikes than likes for example. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, there's a significant number of people who enjoyed it. Some people who watched it with that watch order and, and loved it. Um, or their own watch order because yeah, it yeah. made them think about the idea of doing it. You know, like there was there was a lot of positive response on YouTube. Like I tried to be positive about it. Like I tried to focus on, you know, somebody was like, oh, I'm finally giving a JoJo a, a shot thanks to this video. And like another person was like, oh, yeah, no, I, 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 I love the Like I... I started watching Jojo and I'm liking it. And like, I tried to be like, this is, this is what makes it worth it. And then the guy who was sort of ringleading that, um, just like tried to get their followers to, to dogpile me. So it was like kind of finally dying down the next day. You know, people had run their course of like, I I cannot stress how fucking weird and 
fucked up it is that people are like, haha, I heard of you getting beheaded. Like, that's yeah. like way beyond a death threat. It's not, anyway. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's like, you know, so it had moved past, so it had went to JoJo's shit, like you fucking suck about JoJo, and then it went to the art, and then it moved on to me, right? Yeah. That was like the third layer. And as it died down, somebody with a large following memed on it, right? Which was, it, you know, they were, they were just memeing on it. It wasn't like, yeah, they very, were very different serious. from the JoJo shitter who was shitting on it. Reignited the entire thing. Yeah. It, and it didn't just reignite the entire thing on the JoJo takes. It reignited the entire thing on, on me. Like, I went back to my Twitter replies being like photos of me making fun of me and stuff. Uh, after, that, after that person replied, it, like, it just exploded again right back to where it was at its worst. So I lashed out at them. I, I, I don't tweet. quite think and you lashed. I don't, I don't even know looking back if I'd quite say you lashed out, but you got upset. Yeah. Right? Lashed out is a little extreme. But you did get upset because I don't think they realized that they were reigniting it, which is, you know, you don't realize. Um, but yeah, like that, that added another 24 hours of those people coming back yeah. um, because that reignited it. And that was I think maybe one of your biggest regrets of the whole thing is kind of how that played out. Yeah, yeah. I, I've reached out and apologized to, for, for to the my person. end of that since then. And kind of um, you, you, you kind of explained that like well beyond just JoJo at that point and stuff and you were very on edge. But yeah, yeah. Is, is it had a, an effect, right? Yeah. It's not worth interacting with that community. I haven't gone into it because I don't want to like I don't want to reignite it. Right? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I and really, it sucks I, that... I really don't want to reignite it. I really don't want to like. I, it's 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 hard to like. It's one of my favorite anime of all time. And yeah. I, I I have trouble like even working up the enthusiasm to make a video about it anymore because I'm just like, it's just gonna draw heat from shitty people who are who, just who yeah are looking for an excuse to get mad at me again. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like the. You know, the way I responded to it wasn't completely healthy, but like, fuck, it was a But the TLDR situation. is that you still absolutely stand by that, and that's good. Yeah, yeah. like, I, I stand by pretty much anything, and like, you know, I've looked at a lot of the responses to even the watch order, and like, I, I could very easily debunk, like, a lot of shit, right? Like, there was, there was... You know, one of the popular, like, criticisms of starting with part four is you don't know who Enyaba is if you start with part four. That's great. There's four panels in the entire part four manga where that is even relevant, mm -hmm. right? Like, there's there's lots of stuff where it's like, oh, you won't know what this is. And all of the parts are written so that you only need the context of what happened in that part to understand them, except for part six. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, that's a... Yeah. That's yeah. a... But, but yeah, and I mean, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it to start the fucking fight again. Yeah. It's not worth it to, to, it's just not worth it. Um, but it also makes me feel like it's not worth it to get, to, to like really cover Jojo again. I made yeah, that like, sucks, right? get it's hyped like... for part seven video and that, cause that was like a. Yeah. But that, you had so much stress leading up to that too. Like you were really. You almost backed out of that video a couple times partway through working on it, you know? Yeah. yeah, I don't want this video to sound like, or this video, I don't want this podcast to sound like it was like a negative thing at all. These are just like things that over the last year or two, we've had our own like passive over dinner conversations about, and you've wanted to get them out there, but haven't known how because it's a, you know, it's a risk putting it in a video, but a tweet can get taken way the wrong way and stuff. And it's like, I want to clarify again that I know I didn't say much today. That doesn't mean that I think Jeff has bad takes and I have good takes. It, somebody just has a lot more eyes on them. <laughs> so um, also don't, don't sound off in the comments below if you remember one. All right, that will make me cry. Thank you. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Anyway, ad time. It's time. We're doing the ad. Let's, uh, I'm going to put the boxu okay. down. And this is going to be a smooth transition. So, what is a boxu? And how is it different from a regular box? The answer to that lies inside. Boxu, oh, I for forgot to put the, the <laughs> pamphlet back in. <laughs> uh, so this is the Seasons of Japan box, which contains various Japanese snacks that can only be gotten 
in Japan. God. And they give you a nice little book of liner notes with your uh, various snacks uh, that explains where they're from. Um, what the heck they are. Yeah, what they are, a little bit of history about them. I will say, them. I like to do these the mystery way, personally. I like to do, to just grab, taste, and decide after. You know what I mean? You like to live Take dangerous. a risk. I think that all the stuff that you can, like, the, the little things that you can learn from these. these there are, are multiple really cool. ways to consume your baksu. You can be brave or you can be smart. <laughs> uh, or you can be extra brave and just cram it all in your mouth at once, <laughs> which is kind of what I feel like doing because we skipped lunch to record this. Um, well, you can because we have a second one here. I bent it. Oh, no, that's collectible. Remember, do not bend your Boxu magazine. No, you can it's... consume it however you want. If you want to eat the magazine, eat the magazine. <laughs> Don't eat the magazine. It's not edible. It's the one thing in the box that's not edible. Uh, there's a... F Am I allowed to say the F word? There is a frick load of snacks in here. There is a fuckload of food. Can I show how much food there is? Can I dump yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, dump it all Look out. at... This is the... I want, we'll dump the Midori one. Look at how much is in here. It's not just like a couple snacks. How much you get in one box, Sue? It's not just a couple snacks. One box is enough for both of us to box, Sue. Let's see, what is an okaki? <gasps> this is so cute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on, you can do it. Focus, little camera. You can do it. It's got fishies floating around in it. Look at them jiggle. Can I see? Look at them jiggle. Yeah. Ooh, there's like grapes in there. Here's them. So yeah, you can learn all sorts of little things. Like this is uh, Genovese Okaki. Genovese pesto is made with fresh basil, olive oil, and parmesan. Its mouthwatering flavor pels, pairs well with okaki, a cracker made from mochi rice. Ooh, ooh, that smells pesto-y. Oh my god, that smells so good. Clean. Cheers. Mmm. That is so good. Recently, we had ordered some pasta, and they had, it was like um, pesto ravioli, and they just like drowned it in pesto to the point where it was disgusting. It was like, it ruined the dopamine that you get from eating pesto. And this is so good. Oh my god. Good thing it's in my box. We got two of each of these. <laughs> They're both mine now. They didn't give us a podcast specific code, which means you get to decide who of us you like better. All you got to do is go to boxu.com and buy. Choose your plan. Choose your plan because you can choose one month, three month, 12 month, whatever you feel in. And, and then use promo code Yazzie. Or basement. Or Yazzie. Or basement. Or Yazzie. Or basement. Or Yazzie. Or basement. For $15 off. <laughs> Burger says that if you love cats, you'll use promo code Yazzie for $15 off at Boxu. Burger, do you want to smell the snacks? This is, this is emotional manipulation. This, this should be illegal. Oh, she likes the pesto ones. Let her smell the wasabi ones. Oh, she is not going to like the smell of no, those. No, Kuro liked wasabi smell. Oh, she's not freaked out by it. She licked her lips. Get Boxu. Because the cat said so. <laughs> Let's see what's in this one. Let's take a look at what's in the Seasons of Japan box. Ooh. Seasons of Japan box, too. So that's a spring snack white strawberry it? it's the world's first chocolate infused strawberry produced exclusively for boxu we, no we both have to have one that's <laughs> back off that's <laughs> <laughs> locally harvested strawberries are freeze-dried infused it with white so chocolate good. to make a sweet refreshing treat it smells so good oh my oh. god it's like a strawberry shortcake. I know. It smells so good. But... I don't know if anyone watching is going to know what I'm talking about, but it smells like the body spray you would wear when you were like a, a teenager, the like drugstore cotton candy, white chocolate. And it tastes like an entire strawberry made out of the, the coating on a strawberry pocky. This is so good. It is. If you want a boxu, you should go 
to boxu.com. Boxu.com. They've got a QR code. There's a QR code. Um, here's your reminder that it is definitely very safe to just scan any QR code you see pop up in a YouTube video. <laughs> yeah. 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 Internet Safety 101. Super duper do scan, that. <laughs> scan every QR code that you see pop up in a YouTube video. But yeah, so you go to boxu.com and then you pick an amount of money you want to pay for an amount of boxes, boxus you want to get. And then you choose which of the two, uh, very charismatic and popular and cool and pretty and cool and uh tall and cool <laughs> podcasters whose code you'd rather use would you rather use the promo code basement or the promo code yazzy one of them takes a lot less energy to type out which could be safe you know it's but very valuable one of them is a very common word that people are used to type the fuck are you saying about my name <laughs> I think we both know. <laughs> we do know. Now you gotta feel bad for me and use mine. Damn it! <laughs> All according to Keikaku. Boxu note, Keikaku means plan. <laughs> yeah. So, that was our first podcast back. Um, let us know what you thought about it in the comments below. But be nice, please. Please. <laughs> My dad's dead. <laughs> You heard the man. <laughs>